first thing is what we want to remember for best practices is that you want to remember that you're representing yourself and potentially to future employers. So when you're thinking about social media in general, not just LinkedIn, but all over, you want to do some self-policing, meaning um, you want to make sure that when you're posting something, you should be sharing professional related items around your industry and things that aren't too, I guess, for an example, like maybe too politically charged or too one-sided. So you want anything that uh, even if you delete it, when you start putting things out on the internet, you're not sure what's going to be stuck somewhere. So your credibility could definitely be compromised if you're not careful. So just be conscientious of making sure you're policing what's out there. I tell everyone, do a Google search on your name. You'd be surprised. You you may come up in things you didn't expect. So that's a good first step because if an employer searches you, you want to know what they're going to see. Um, profanity is not really ever a good idea, right? But definitely your presence online, you want to make sure you're watching profanity and double checking spelling, grammar. Uh, these are all things that speak to an employer before they ever speak to you. So your online presence is going to be the first story that you tell about yourself. So be conscientious and make sure that if you're not Sure, if your LinkedIn is ready, you can actually hide it until you know that it's ready for consumption. Uh, monitor your privacy. So this means, and this is again, I speak about LinkedIn, but really you can apply this to most any social media uh, that you're using. You want to make sure that your privacy settings are set in a way that makes you comfortable to be on the internet, but not have all of your things out there. So uh, for example, in LinkedIn, you can definitely control your privacy settings, know who's going to see your profile. I have people that may be job searching that are currently in a job. So they might change their privacy settings to be viewable by no one because they don't want their employer seeing that they're job searching, so to speak. So uh, just things like that. And you want to make sure you're conscious of making sure that that's set to what you want someone to see all the time and change it accordingly. Um, untag yourself in other posts that you find that might be out there that someone else tagged you in that might be a little bit inappropriate or unprofessional. And so just spot check now and then. And so keep work comments positive. This is important because when we want to vent about an employer or a boss, we want to just really keep in mind that your professional reputation is at stake. So I always just tell people, if it's anything work-related, keep it professional. If you want to say things that, you know, if you want to get out your frustrations, do that on your personal phone, on your personal time. And be careful again about who you who you speak to as well, because that could all get back and um, not help you in your profession. All right. So key points, keep it professional always. Professional photo is basically another area where this is one of the first things they're going to see when they pull up your profile. So you want that to represent you the way you want to be seen. A uh, strong impression is going to be made by what is or is not there. So make sure you're thinking about who's going to see this, what did they see first, and what impression is it leaving. And the you want to make sure the representation of yourself is accurate um, for your profession. So you may you may have a personal side to your life that is a little different than your profession. You want to keep those separate and make sure that you're uh, applying an outside eye to it to ask and clarify that everything is lined up and the career center we do this we do help you with building a profile so if at any time you're unsure you can always meet with us and we can help you with some of the nuances because i'm going to go into some detail here a little bit later that can be a little more convoluted and a little more challenging to navigate if someone doesn't help you so we are help happy to work with you so treating your uh profile on LinkedIn, kind of like it's your resume, meaning you want to make sure all the sections in there are sort of similar to what you would have on a resume. Uh, make sure that it is a mirror image, not exactly word for word, but you don't want to leave out whole jobs on one that's on the other. 
because if an employer looks at your resume and then they go and they look at your LinkedIn profile and things are missing, it creates a question. Uh, ensure that your skills, knowledge, experiences are the same. So you just want to be mindful of kind of mirroring that to some extent. And then things you want to consider adding. You want to make sure you have a custom headline. I'm going to show you all these when I walk through each part. Work experience, volunteer, courses, skills. So you see there's added things here. So courses and um, interests in orgs. There's a point in which some of this might not go on a resume. So LinkedIn is actually where you put those additional things because you don't have a limitation on the number of pages or the amount of content you want to include. So things to do. Connect with groups and organizations of interest. This allows you to start seeing what's being said in your industry, engaging if you're interested, becoming a part of that space and becoming familiar with what's going on in the space, what people are saying. You want to follow companies of interest. The reason this is nice is because LinkedIn kind of is similar-ish to like a Facebook. So you'll have a wall on there. And when you follow companies, then things that they're doing or promoting are going to show up on your wall. So you can be kept current on what that company is doing when you follow them. And if an employer looks at your profile and say you apply to a job, they can see on your profile that you're following them. So that's just kind of letting them know that you are showing an interest in their company. You can connect with EMU alumni as well as recruiters. This is a good way to start building that network so that if you ever did want to reach out to someone that's working somewhere you're interested in, you can connect with an alumni and that's actually one thing you have in common. So it gives you sort of that in. Uh, search for people like you, meaning like you in where they're at in their career path, where what they're doing professionally, maybe what they're doing, but a little beyond where you are so that you could maybe find a mentor out of that. Uh, they can guide you a little bit and help you say, say they're three positions above where you're going in entry level. How did you get there? What did you do? Uh, what are some things I can avoid so that I can get there quicker? So yeah, you just want to start finding people and connecting with them, the ones that are going to relate to what your interests are. Uh, use the job search feature and develop your personal brand. And we'll go into that a little more in a minute. All right. So some of the goals when building your LinkedIn profile is you want to build engagement, authenticity, and your personal brand. This is a space that re represents you. So you want to make sure that the engagement is there, but you you want to be conscientious of making connections that are relatable. If you have too many connections and not everyone is aligned with your interest, you're going to get a lot of interactions and things on your page that maybe you don't necessarily want, right? So you want to kind of mind the people you want to connect with and then review the requests for connection before you make them to make sure they're a good fit with your with your network. So growing the connections and building relationships is an ongoing activity. It is something that you will sort of, it's kind of like we make friends and then we evolve, we grow, we change, we make new friends. We're constantly building, developing, and uh, massaging relationships in our life. This is just another area of doing that in your professional space. And then you want to gain access to more opportunities through networking. This is really what networking is about, is finding those commonalities in people and making yourself known so that when something comes up, you're someone people may think of. So these are where I'm going to start getting into the LinkedIn site and things you can do within it. And this is where I was saying it might get a little bit deeper of a dive than you can kind of absorb while I'm presenting it. So we're happy to meet with you if you're not comfortable getting through the navigation. So you can customize your URL in LinkedIn. And we really do encourage this because it's really long, right? It's just really long because what is assigned to you is, is assigned to you. And there's so many people in there that they just keep getting longer and longer. So when you customize it, you can then use it to add to your resume header. So right where your phone number and your email are, your LinkedIn URL can go there as well. So that's basically like giving the employer an invitation to review your profile saying, you know, there's nothing out there that I'm worried about you finding. I'm actually inviting you to find this and review it and see what I have to offer. 
Uh, you can add that URL to your business cards if you have them, and you can also add it to your email signatures in your email and on your phone. And that's another thing if you needed help with, we can help you with building those signatures because then no matter where you're communicating from phone, um, if you're on your phone, it at least comes from your phone looking professional. All right, so some easy personal branding aspects. There are sites you can use to create photos that are have like clear backgrounds or a color or a, you know, different designs by using Canva or you can, um, you, you, the background on these you see there's different, everyone has a different background. One has the student center. And um, so these are actually customizable. So as you can see on Logan's, you see the pencil up at the top right. You can edit that part in the background. So this is another space to really personalize your profile and your account and sort of, it is the first thing an employer sees. So you can see why a professional photograph is helpful. And then that, uh, that image in the background really does allow you to speak to the audience that you want them to know something about you. So LinkedIn headshots, you can make yourself, you see how uh, Rebecca here has different backgrounds. All of those can be found on this pfpmaker.com. So if you want to write that down, if you want to use it, you can put a photo in and then you can look at different backgrounds and decide which one you like best. It's just one place. Also, if you ever come to one of our job fairs, we always have the photographers for Eastern at our fairs where you can get your picture taken there. Since you're already dressed up and looking nice, we offer that so that you can get that done that day and then they will send you the photo and then you can use it and post it wherever you'd like to, to, to have it. So as far as work experience, it, as I said, it should match what's on your resume, including the dates. Um, so the job title dates, every aspect of it should mirror. Uh, you can add language, a little more writing if you wanted to, but um, you really want it to minimally mirror what your resume says. And then um, you want the job description, the work, the descriptions of the jobs you've had to line up or match with the jobs that you're pursuing, meaning there should be keywords in there that if an employer does a keyword search, those words are in your profile and they can find you via those searches. So you can also add and embed media links, images, presentations. This, this allows you a lot more capacity to promote yourself in a lot of different ways. It's just expansive compared to what a resume allows you to do. Okay. So building your profile, I'm going to just this content you see, I'm just going to scroll back two pages or three or four. Hold on. So right here, this is where you start to customize your content. So your name under your name, that's a headline. So that's something that you're saying about yourself. So back to where we were. This is a headline right here. So you're going to write that and it'll give you the number of letters or words that are allowed. So as you can see, the about is very short because it doesn't have as many words that you're allowed to use. This box is going to give you a lot more space so you can really be a little more elaborate on who you are and what you're looking for. The one thing I do make sure everyone knows about this is that when you're on LinkedIn and you're looking at this part, it's usually like two, two and a half sentences. And then that's the dot, dot, dot more, and they have to open it. So if someone does not ever choose to open the dot, dot, dot space, make sure that sentence, the top two sentences really do speak to what you want known about you in case they don't open it and expand it to read the rest. Okay. So you can see here, there's there's details around different things that are specific to my industry. So Clifton Strengths, the Myers-Briggs type indicator, your Holland codes. So you, for your industry, might want to hi highlight things like technologies you know how to use or, uh, yeah, so anything. You want to keep this professional, though, too. You don't want to go too personal in any of these profiles. Okay, so these are some examples of posts on LinkedIn. It's it's really just, again, it's kind of like Facebook, but for professionals. So you're going to post things like, 
I got my job. I'm searching for employment. I'd love to hear from anyone interested. Um, I got this certificate. So these are ways in which you can sort of promote what you're doing and your successes. And that is going to be on your wall for everyone to see. So again, keep in mind, what is it? Does it fit here? Should I put it here? All right. Explore job opportunities. So you can see this green jobs button. This actually drops down and changes to, all. it doesn't change, but you can choose from, you can look for jobs. You can um, search groups from under this tab. Um, company, like, so this, uh, so sorry, whoops, whoops. So yeah, this is where you sort of navigate what space within LinkedIn you want to search. And then you can also add filters. So if you wanted to add more filters than these, you would open this up, but you could choose different things like I want an entry level position only, or I want only part-time work or only remote. And then do that job search and you can see it will show you one company alumnus works here. So one Eastern alumni works in this space. So sometimes that helps you to know there's potentially somebody I could reach out to. Right here, you see easy apply. This means that the employer allows you to apply through LinkedIn and it's gonna use all of your profile content to populate the application. So the more complete your profile is, the more it's gonna be beneficial to save you time in completing that application. Cause we all know those can take hours, hour and a half, two hours. So be sure again, when you're searching, use keywords and filters. This allows you to scale. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, yeah. So public health, that's where you can search using a keyword location also helps narrow down. So you want to match skills and profile requirements and apply externally as well. Some employers will offer the easy apply, but right here, this apply button, that is going to take you off the site. So it will take you external that you can follow along from here and apply. Okay. And it's just like any other job board. If you've ever used one, then it's the same for the rest. You can create job alerts with filters. So it will report to you jobs that align with your filters. So as I was saying, this is where it gets a little more in depth and you do have to sort of mine a little deeper, but this is, you can connect with the EMU alum. You can do a search so you can sort and filter through alumni search using keywords. So either maybe a job title or a major. So you want somehow to take that 127,000 down to, so you see 13,000 because they filtered with public health. All right that then could even be filtered down more by a job title or a location distance from you, those kind of things. And then find people that you think would be good alumni connections. And then you would definitely want to make that request to connect. And we do recommend here are some personalized connection request messages that we created for you. So what we wanted is we wanted to give you an idea of what, what you should say in these messages because you don't want to use the generic um, LinkedIn built message because it is just obviously generic. And if you want someone to sort of take you seriously professionally, you want to make that first impression show that you did take the time and you did care about making sure that you customized that and spoke to them regarding what you were looking for. So if you're reaching out to an alumni, you would send a different message than you might to a recruiter after an event that you attended or to a recruiter or hiring manager. So each message can be different and should be a little bit different and it should be specific to what that request is. And we have these all, we have these all built out. Well, not all, but we built quite a few into one page showing you sort of what to say and the reason we do this too is because there is a get again a word limit. So you'll you have to be concise. There's only so much space you have to send this message. There's so many letter count. So you can always find these in the resource library on Handshake and or ask me and I can send them to you as well. 
And they're just a guide to start helping you with building these so that you have them on the ready when you want to make a connection. All right. So I encourage you all to join our group, the UACDC group, because uh, we promote several things we're doing on here as well. It, we do it in other places too, but we want to make sure that you're connected to us so that anything we are doing that we are notifying you about and, and you can like it. And that's the thing too, is if you like things on LinkedIn, it will show employers if you sent a post, if you shared something or you liked something, those are all seen by employers. So keep that in mind because sometimes we want to just make sure what, what are they seeing? Does it, is it relevant? Is it professional? So always keeping that in the forefront and the link for that is you can always just search the name of our office too, to join. And that is all for my presentation, but I'm going to go back a couple slides because I did want to say one more thing about, um, so the connecting with groups and organizations of interest, these, there are so many in here that you were, really do need to be conscientious of like being more specific with your wording when you search the groups because otherwise you get such a long list that it's really hard to decide which ones you want to join. And this is one of those things where you have to actually request to join. So you'll ask, you can see they write a small synopsis of who are we? What are we about? Why does this group exist? What do we talk about? Then you can decide based on that, do I want to request to join? And then you can also control the, um, the frequency in which you get messaging from that group or see posts in that group. So if you don't want your inbox flooded, you could just say once a week or once a month. And in these groups, they're interactive. So you can communicate with people in the group as well as just seeing what other people are saying and start engaging in conversation that way. So, um, so the other thing I want to say, I actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my LinkedIn page for a minute. So, because it is nice to be able to see what LinkedIn looks like from the user perspective, right? So this is the wall I was talking about. So I follow UHY. So I am seeing UHY postings, right? They're promoting a program. I might not know that if I wasn't following that company. So it is really helpful to see that it just pops right up there. And then if I go to right here, the, the little circle with your head in it and go to your profile, this is where you can edit your URL. So if you click the pencil and then you click the pencil again, it's actually underlining what can be changed. So you can see I my name is pretty unique, so I didn't really need to do much. But if your name is not as uh, unique, you might need to put an underscore or a number or a first initial, middle initial, last name, something like that until it's not taken. Then you save it and then that URL can be borrowed and taken and put onto any documents that you have and want it on. And then I'm going to go to my network real quick and show you this aspect. So within your network, page. You can see your connections. You can see the groups that you're involved with, that you're connected to. You can, you can, you can um, subscribe to newsletters. You can sign up for events, hashtags, but it's always making recommendations for you based on your mutual connections. So you can see it shows me how many mutual connections I have with certain people. And I don't necessarily have to right away connect with them. I can look at, their pro look at their profile and decide, is this a connection I want to make? And then you can see this little open to work. That is also a choice that you can use within your profile. So if I go to my homepage, I'm sorry, I go to my profile. See this open to button is where you say open to work and it will go into your picture. Okay. And then... You see how it's say this about me. This is where see more. This is where you want to make sure that this information, it's three lines basically, is what you want seen in case they don't open it and see anything else. And then the uh, the activity, this is where I was saying you might be, people are going to be seeing what we comment on, what we share, and what we ourselves post. 
Okay. And then you can endorse yourself for skills here as well. You can, you can identify skills and then you can be endorsed by others. And this is all seen by an employer, meaning if an employer sees that you've been endorsed 86 times for a skill, that gives credibility to what you're um, acknowledging that your skills are. And you can have employers or faculty or previous bosses write you recommendations that can be posted to your page that employers also will see. The only real criteria for that is that they have to be first linked to you. So there's right next to your name, it will show a number, a first, second. So if I go to my network and I just pick a person and click on them, do you see where it says second here? That means I am not connected to them yet, so they can't be first linked to me. And once they are first linked, this more button it will show you an option to request a recommendation from someone. So if you don't see it, it's because you're not first linked to someone and you have to connect to them before you're able to request a recommendation from them. I think those were the really the key points I wanted to make. So uh, any questions? And yes. Yes, go Bob, ahead. Yeah, we do have a, a couple of questions that came through the chat. Sure. And um, um, just be right before I read them out, uh, I did post the link to the sign up sheet. So kindly uh, sign in. Um, and then so the first question is, is there a way to make money through LinkedIn? And then the second question is, how can you make your profile hidden before you are ready to make it public? Got it. Can you make money on LinkedIn? Yes. Um, it would depend, you know, on what your interests are. I have recruiters daily that try to solicit me to help me build my coaching clientele, which is unfortunate that they're not looking that I, I'm employed somewhere. I'm not just a, a life coach or something that needs to build clientele. But that is something that I get solicited for daily. Um, a lot of people will promote their services on here if they're on like Fiverr or you know you're you're doing contract work. You can you can promote yourself that way as well. So yeah, there are different ways to use LinkedIn as a platform to promote yourself. And then how do you hide your profile? The way you hide your profile is I'll start where, where you go. You go here, view profile. I'm already there. I just wanted to show that's where you get here. And then right below where you customize your URL on the right-hand side. Sorry. It's within that. I'm like, why am I missing it? So it's within your, um, so where you cor correct your URL, that's why I was confusing myself because it is on the same page where you edit that. It's just below it. So you can see, you can actually turn off your profile's visibility all the way just by hitting this button and it turns off. All visibility off. Click, turn back on. Okay, then if you want it on, but you want to be specific about what can be seen, that's where you can really then customize. I only want first links to me to see or you want your network of connections three degrees away from you to see. And then you can see each area you can decide to hide or show, okay? And then if you're really, really good, you can create badges. <laughs> this is not my area of um, strength, but you can definitely use this to take the code and present a badge somewhere, say like on a website. If you have a website, you can put this at the bottom of an email signature or something, right? So you can definitely, you know, customize it to some extent, but you you want to choose the badge you want, use that code, and you can create badges. So, um, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, quick question, Bob. So when you hide your profile, are you just like hiding it 
safe from safe somebody who's not connected to you to uh is trying to look for you won't find you or are you pretty much like um going missing uh from the social media okay so it's um it's gonna show that you are you have a profile but they won't see content okay mm -hmm. So you can edit content here, mm -hmm. but you can also, like, if you didn't want to hide your whole profile, you can say, I don't want to hide it, but I only want these three things seen, right? I don't think it hides you to where you go invisible. Let me see here. Your con um, Yeah, you don't completely go ghost you don't go away <laughs> you oh. do you are still there but they can't see anything about you so i tell people do that when you're basically when your page is under construction right oh. you want to sort of like when i'm building i don't want people seeing me in the midst of building mm -hmm. um the only the only other thing i i would say is and i know this takes time to be like conscientious but if you're hiding your profile, but then you have your LinkedIn URL at the top of a resume and you're applying to things, but then the employer goes to that URL and they see nothing, you want to think about that. If you don't want them looking at your profile, I would say don't include it at the top of your resume just because then you're creating a, well, why'd they share it with me if they're not going to show me anything? So just kind of keep that in mind. Sort of like it's like those housekeeping items, like make sure that you're voicemail box is empty so that if somebody try an employer leaves you a message they're not hitting the oh mailbox is full situation right so it's sort of like those things just keep be conscientious of what don't put it there till you're ready for it to be seen i guess okay perfect all right uh riley i see your hand up uh, go ahead with your question and then we have another question that has come through the chat great thank you um this is somewhat connected um you said you mentioned the headshots that are offered at the job fairs i attended the spring job fair and um had some headshots taken do you know when we could expect to receive those usually we say about two weeks because they they did i think 180 headshots that day so they're going through and compiling they're they're pulling out you know, if you had uh, 25, they don't do that probably. They only do a couple at that event, but um, they they have to put those together, send you an email with them in it. So it is taking them a little bit of time. So I'd give them two weeks. Perfect. Thank you. I'm hoping to use it as my my LinkedIn profile picture. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would give them that the grace of two weeks and it was right before a holiday. So that, you know, um, a lot of people didn't work Thursday, Friday. So lost a couple business days there. Absolutely. Totally understand. I'm looking forward to receiving it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did it. Any other questions? Yes. There's mm -hmm. another question that are two part question. So do you have any suggestion for including the LinkedIn profile in your email signature? So currently I have I have it linked to an image of the LinkedIn logo. So that's the first part of the question. And then the second part is also, do you have any thoughts on how active you should be on LinkedIn with posts, comments, et cetera? So I'm going to answer the second half first. Well, I would say active is a relative term, right? So are we saying active in starting to make connections or active in like, so I would say build your profile first, right? So everything else comes from that. So if you want to start creating like connections, you're asking someone to connect. And I personally look at someone's profile before I agree to connect with them because I want to know what they're doing. I want to know what they're using my connection for because I don't want to connect and immediately I'm being solicited for something that I am not interested in. So I say, build the profile. Once the profile's built, build the network. Once you're building the network, 
activity can be whatever is comfortable for you. I think industry matters. So if you're going into marketing, you might want to think a little differently about it than if you're going into, say, counseling. A little different as far as the expectation of what an employer wants to see, right? This is for someone going into advertising in that, this is almost like a portfolio, right? So it really does depend on the space you're going into as to what the employer might expect on your activity level. And then does that answer your the first part of your question? Uh, no. Yes, thank you. And then okay. the other part was um, for email signatures. Yep. Do you have any recommendations of what that should look like? Is it kind of preference? Right now, I have it linked to like a small logo picture. Okay, I'll just go to mine and show you how where where to go to do it, and then um, what mine looks like. I'm not saying it has to be exactly like mine, but at least this way you can see like what basically I would consider to be useful. Uh, you go to this. If you're using Google, this is a Google email. So you go to your settings and then all settings. Within this all settings area, you're going to scroll down to the signature. So basically you can do whatever you want. Like I have the, um, my certification for doing the um, call to serve federal advising certificate. Um, but you can, you can create whatever you want here and make it personal as personal as you'd like. Right. So every time I open my email, so if I go here and say compose, that's what my signature looks like. So it could just be your signature, but it could be more. And I think you include what you want someone to know. So if you want people connecting to you on LinkedIn, I would put, you know, connect on LinkedIn and your, you know, access for them to click that right there and go to your LinkedIn. And then, um, and I have to actually delete this. So that's the other thing is if you're putting time sensitive information in here, be conscientious. Think about that before you do it, because I always forget <laughs> to delete things, right? So if you want something that you don't really have to be aware of or on, on top of always updating, I would say just put in there something that's static and you're not going to have it needing to be adjusted. And then when you finish that, you want to always save it. If you don't go and, um, hold on. so at the bottom here, save changes. If you don't do that, it won't take, okay? So, and if you're unsure, build it, go in, click compose, see what it looks like. If you don't like it, go back in, fix it. That's what I do. Like how, how much space is it taking up? Do I like it highlighted or not highlighted, right? And then all of these links are different ways to connect with me. So it's really up to you how you want that done. But I put my picture here. You don't have to. You can do it any way that you are comfortable with what you feel like it's going to show about you. That answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Do you have any other questions? You can, you know, just come off mute and ask away or, hmm. you know, post something on the chat. Uh, we still have a sometimes so we can definitely take maybe a couple of more questions yeah i'm happy to answer any questions that you have any concerns or if you're you know like i've never used linkedin what's the purpose of it what what's the value um those kind of things i can you know i can tell you that linkedin is basically a very prominent hub for employers not to say that there are, are not other sites that they use, but LinkedIn has become sort of like the space for employers because they can learn so much about you. If you keep, if you make your profile fully populated with all the content, that is really going to add value to the employer knowing a lot about you without even making that connection. And it's telling your story, right? So for example, if I go to my homepage, 
you can see that these are recent things I've done. These are groups I'm in. So um, you, you want to make sure that these are things that you want to be seeing. And that's where you can like, comment, repost. That stuff is going to go on to your activities section, right? So activity, when, when you're looking to make connections, the other thing I want to say is this is recommending people in different realms. So I never know which is which because I work at Eastern and I went to school at Eastern. So I think it's work than school. Um, so people you may know from your job, people you may know from where you've gone to school, people you may know, and then see how it's going into the broader Detroit metropolitan area. And then below it starts to recommend. So keep in mind too, this has an, like algorithms built in that are paying attention to your activity. So the more you search similar things, the more it's going to start to recommend newsletters and groups and things that are related to things you're interested in and that you are searching and actively looking into. And then it goes back, see, this is in higher ed. That's the industry I work in. So it gets a little bigger and then it, it still continues promoting and then when you see you have a lot of mutual connections with someone, that's somebody you want to consider. Like we have a lot of people. I have 80 people in common with this individual. Those are sometimes where I start, right? Or sometimes it's that job title. So you're like, okay, they're an educator or they're a career services person. I want to know about what they do. And then people, you know, based on your recent activity. So it just, it's always feeding you suggestions and it's always recommending people that you might want to follow. Um, and then online events. So this is also going to help you with knowing what might be going on out there that I could gain some exposure or, again, another networking opportunity if I attend one of these online events. There are audio events. And then more suggestions. It's just forever feeding you recommendations. So go on here often and find people that you think might be a good connection for you and, and make that like I'm going to connect to Jenny right now. So, yeah, um, I did. I know her. So, <laughs> you know, just go click, click, click. Right. You got to know that that's a connection you want to make. Yeah, unmute yourself, Mina. All right, so I was wondering, because my tax internship ends on Friday, like I know if you want to get a CPA, then you need to have like one year of experience in accounting. But I was wondering, like, for example, am I allowed to apply for like a finance internship, a marketing internship, a social media internship? Because, you know, those are all part of business. It's not exactly accounting. But I was wondering, like, if you can answer that question. Yes. Well, you can apply to anything you want. It is the question, will that add value? Is that what you're wanting to know? Will that help your, will what? that help you in your future job search when you're trying to get into the industry? Yeah. Like, let's say if I want to get a C, if I'm planning to get a CPA soon, would I have to just stick to accounting industries or can I just like branch out to other industries to like explore and see what I like? I, I mean, you can't, you can apply to anything you want. I think you, if you feel the need to explore and get some variations in exposure, <clears throat> I would say do it. Cause that's a good time when you're interning, that's when the employers are going to expect the, the least from you. <clears throat> and I don't mean least as in they don't want you to have any skills. It's just that when you go from intern to entry level, there's a different standard of how much they want you to come in knowing. Interns, they know that you're there to learn and to get some exposure. So that's a good time to sort of trial a different space out and get a feel for it because it is short term. And it's basically a commitment that ends on both sides. So no one has to quit. No one has to be fired. No one has to, right? Like, you're done. Like it has a shelf life and it's over when it's over. And then you have that experience to add to your resume. Um, and then you can say, I tried it, didn't love it, but now I know. Right. So I would say pursue things that you're curious about 
And if you do think it's possible you might want that, then an internship in it would help. All right, so that helps. So for example, let's say I'm an accounting you know, major, which I am, and I wanna explore AI. Mm -hmm. Like now's the best time to do that, to like explore, for example, what you're interested in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Barb. Keep in mind, though, you have a time in which you can intern. Most employers do not hire interns when you've graduated. Interns are usually students. So okay. once you're a graduate, you're not going to be able to apply for internships most of the time. They're going to question, why aren't you applying for an entry-level position at that point? So internships do have that grace of not expecting as much knowledge in the space. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, you might want to make sure your resume is written to fit you to that non-related job that you're looking for. So we can help with that too. We can help you with kind of wordsmithing your resume to line you up with something that you're looking for that might be outside the scope of what you would normally pursue. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Was this helpful? Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Good. It is a lot, and I know that, and that's why I said I know that some of those were like searching alone. There's a lot of like filtering and deep diving. You're not going to break LinkedIn, so I say click, play, figure it out. Um, you can hide your profile for a while and just build it. You can make appointments with anyone in my office. We can go over your profile with you. We can help you with wordsmithing. Um, just making sure that you know another set of eyes is looking at it. We're happy to do that with you. And also just a, just an FYI for anyone who might not have finished all their learning beyond the LBC or learning beyond the classrooms. This is one way you can get an LBC credit for group four. You can only have one, your LBCs have to be in two different groups. If you need to, if you're a transfer student, you only need one. But if you needed two, they can't both be in the same grouping. So professional career and professional development is under group four and you can actually create a LinkedIn profile and that would give you credit for one of the LBC credits for group four. And if you are interested in doing that, you can go to our website and I can take you there right now so that you can see where it is. So everyone can see this. Yeah. So if you scroll down on career development right here, create a LinkedIn profile for your learning beyond the classroom. It is super simple. It's only eight boxes that need checked. One of them is a photo. So, you know, not too tough, not too tough. 10 connections, um, one recommendation, complete it, complete your education and job sections. You want to identify three skills you have, join our UACDC group, become a member of one additional group. And then when you're done, you can send it to the career underscore services or any one of our staff members, and we will review it and issue credit for you.